jeweled mandala to you, precious Guru. Idam Guru Radha Mandala Gamni Radha Yami. Jadanjali Yadam La Yanjo Bado Dani Yazu Jidagi Chenye Jipezonam Jidro La Benji Zanye Jubaju. Jadan Zodi Chanam La Janjo Bado Dani Yazu Jidagi Jenye Jipezonam Jidro La Benji So welcome everyone. Thank you uh, all for coming today. Uh, so we had some questions uh, over the week um, and then some questions last week just about the Heart Sutra. So uh, without you know getting into too deep of waters, uh, um, I'm happy that I see someone who actually could swim in those waters on Zoom right now. So if we get into any of the parshim that I have trouble with, there's, I think, a helper who might be here with us. So um, I, uh, I think that, you know, based on some of the questions, it may be helpful to go over just the general meaning of perfection of wisdom. The question was asked about the deity, Prajna Paramita. Um, and then so I asked, so I went online and, you know, I looked, I, I found a lot of the history and, and uh, uh, about this. And then I went to Rinpoche and asked, and he said, well, you know, if we're talking about it in terms of the Heart Sutra and the Perfection of Wisdom Sutras, the idea of this tantric deity is wrong view. And he said, it's actually an incorrect understanding of the Prajna Paramita. Um, it's an incorrect understanding of this idea of her ladyship, of the mother of the Buddhas. Um, the Prajna Paramita mantra is said in this way. This idea that there is a mantra that's secretly a tantric ritual that's embedded in a sutra um, is something that Rinpoche said is in our tradition. Uh, let me be clear: there's so many traditions and so many understandings. There's tankas that you know uh, depict Chenrezig Rezig um, as a female, and then it's interpreted as Chen Rezig is the teacher who is the actual goddess. Um, so there's a lot of things that I've read and interpretations that I've read and cults actually that started based on this understanding. Um, but in our tradition, we see the Prajnaparamita um, as a sutra teaching. Um, and the reason, uh, we'll get into it in a minute, but the reason that we see this mother, um, because we say that the there's a couple, the earlier Tibetans would say um, there are six mothers um, and then uh, 11 children or something to this nature. Um, and the mothers would be the actual 100,000 verse perfection of wisdom sutra and so on and so forth. Um, we'll leave the actual list if we had a text or two scholar. Um, um, and then the later, later, later on, they, you know, we see commentaries where they say it's really those three realizations that we find at the beginning of the Abhisama Alamkara that are the mothers that give birth to what? Give birth to the Buddhas, but give birth to the different types of beings because they would say, Maitreya says give birth to the Buddhas, um, but then we see in the beginning of the Abhisama Alamkara that the knowledge of all, which is knowledge of bases, gives rise to hearers and prachika Buddhas. Um, so, um, so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about a mother giving birth. We're talking about this perfection of wisdom, this, this perfection of these wisdoms giving rise to Buddha. Um, and, and that's the true interpretation. So let's get to the Heart Sutra. That's enough out of me. Um, I just wanted to get really specific to that question uh, about her ladyship a little bit. Um, and that all of what I'm talking about is based on what Rinpoche and I like over the last week have discussed and looking at different commentaries and stuff, um, and trying to understand how this idea transformed. Um, so, um, 
and it's also even we it's not it's it's not it's in tibetan buddhism and, and our tradition and very close traditions as well um so um there are other interpretations so i just want to say that this is our school's interpretation um and according to hari vajra and uh the mukta sena and and matre and these other commentaries that we have um these are that view is in line with those other commentaries and that this idea of the refutation of this being a tantric mantra is all over the place in, in the, the commentaries uh, that we find. Okay, Rinpoche. The Shirab Nimpo Natsu Dets the Gecha She. The Teata Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasangate Bodhisoha. They guarded it. Gangasim and Lama Kashe, they lie. They lie. They do yomare. Mm. So we find in Jayan Gopi Lodru's uh, commentary, wow, you're, you're going to have to brush some cobwebs off of this. Uh, in the uh, Jayan Gopi Lodru's commentary, we find that this mantra isn't a mantra. It, it is not a tantric mantra because it is not a, a mantra among any of the four classes of tantra. Is that a uh, love song law? It is not a mantra because it's not within any among the four judije, the four classes of tantra? I'm sorry, I'm not, I can't hear it that clearly. Okay, so I didn't okay. hear it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm confident. That, that sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Um, so it's not uh, it's not a tantric mantra because it's not a mantra that can be found within uh, any of the uh, uh, as a as a um, mantra of a deity among any of the four can't be explained among the four classes of tantra. We find that in Jayan Gopi Lodru's commentary. Jayan Gopi Lodru was the textbook writer for Lo Saling before Penchen Son Andrapa, and Penchen Son Andrapa's works just became so immense and so clear that they took over using his textbooks. But Jayan Gopi Lodru was the first textbook writer, and it's actually the basis of commentary that Rinpoche has always used for his Heart Sutra explanation. So when we go back, we've got to figure out how to get the Heart Sutra on the website. For some reason, it's not loading. Um, but And if not, we can, we, Adrian, I think, has the cassettes uh, that we made, um, and we can, Lich says that he can get them onto a digital format. Um, but Rinpoche has the whole giant Gopi Lodru commentary of the Heart Sutra. If, we, if you haven't heard that, um, he gave it a ton of times around the United States. He did it at Datsa Rinpoche's in Indiana, Dalai Lama's brother invited him and he did it with Roy. Um, Roy translated it all. And Roy became like a machine about Jayan Gopi Lodru's commentary and the Abhisama Alankara during that time. He was obsessed with Prajnaparamita. And if anybody who knows Roy knows that Roy is like a Geshe, you know, he really, Rinpoche will say that. He's just, he's a Sanskrit scholar now. He teaches at Harvard. I mean, he's an incredible scholar. And at that time, the two of them just sucked the marrow out of this Heart Sutra multiple times in multiple places. Um, and I know a lot of you were able to see and hear that um, or were around or were able to see the videos of it. And uh, um, someone actually just called me recently uh, from the, another center asking about it. So um, we'll figure that out. But that uh, commentary is the basis for the explanation of the five paths that we, um, all the stuff uh, came from that, um, that we hear about all the time. Not that it's not in other places, but um, it's a beautiful, beautiful commentary. And it's written in a way that, hey, Adrian, he's got the cassettes. It's written in a way that you can read it. Like, I don't know, back then I could look at it and it wouldn't be as scary as some of the stuff I'm trying to look at now. So um, I want to also find that root text. I don't know where it is, but we'll figure that out soon. Um, so the 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 donda garde the sherab nipo the donda the dudu shena the jutsen garde arshi shena jibu donda ma dudu shena chona jona gona mulu na na jisa. Okay, so if we were to summarize what the Heart Sutra uh, is means or what the Heart Sutra is presenting. It's presenting the five paths, uh, the five, um, we'll, we'll call, we'll say parentheses Mahayana because it's a Mahayana Sutra. So the five Mahayana paths, the path of accumulation, the path of preparation, 
the path of seeing, the path of meditation, and the path of no more learning. Uh, so that if we were to summarize what is the meaning of the Heart Sutra, uh, it's it's those five paths. Um, then, hey, this this Shirap Nimpo, the Sanjay Chison Sulasun, Sanjay, the Shila, Sanjay Sulasun, Kanje, Ganya Sina, the Shari, the Shari Putra, Don Chen Rezi, Gaja Shagru, Chortle, the Chortle, the Garshene, Shari Putra, the Chortle, the Chortle, then this Sanjay Ka. Sanjay Ka is over. Garshin, Gangi Love Ka. Jesunai Ka. Ka Song Yoda Song. So when we look at the Heart Sutra, we say who is actually teaching the Sutra, right? You know, because we see Chen Rezig and Shariputra. They're asking questions, um, and it doesn't. And then the Buddha at the end just says, "You know, yeah, this is good." And you know, there's not a lot of work that the appear. It doesn't appear that the Buddha is saying a lot of things during this uh, um, sutra. It seems like there's an interplay between Chen Rezig and Shariputra more so than you would see Buddha's uh, t actual. If you're reading it at its you know, just reading it, it seems as though really the teacher here is Chen Rezi. But what's happening here is there's three types of teachings that the, the Buddha um, gives that we say is the speech of the Buddha. Um, if it's, it's speech of the Buddha, if it's been blessed by the Buddha. So among those three, one of them is if it's a speech blessed by the Buddha. So what happens at the beginning of this is the Buddha basically takes over in a way the minds puts under a spell Chen Rezig and, and, and Shariputra and causes this question and answer to take place in order to present the, the, the final view as well, the five paths, but within it, the perfection of wisdom. So the perfection of wisdom, usually when you break those teachings down, you break them down into the ultimate truth teaching and then the teachings, which are the sequence of serial realizations, really. You know, like the sequence, the way that things happen, the paths, the orders of paths, and then the ultimate truth, which is the final realization, uh, uh, ultimately. So um, Nagarjuna, you know, you see the Nagarjuna works that are really more about the emptiness, more about the ultimate truth, and then some of the other works more about the, the, the actual sequence of realizations. Um, so now we're in a water I don't want to swim in. So then he uh uh, Rinpoche, then the Triwa Dan Lenja, the Shacha Tupa Shela Joseph. Also, Ronson, Shari Putra Dan, Chen Rezi, Ronson, Yomare, Shari Putra Shere, the Soba, the Soda, and you, she's a little Soba. Okay, so, uh, so all of this, the reason that we say um, that this is Buddhist speech is because the Arisal of the words from Chen Rezik and Shariputra um, is because of the Buddha's blessing. So the words that come out of uh, Shariputra and Chen Rezik are because of, of a Buddhist blessing that takes place. Um, almost like, I don't know, I've heard so many things like hypnotized or so many different, you know, the spiritual hypnosis or something, you know. Um, but really, it's just a blessing that takes place, that takes over their minds and makes their minds and their reactions be what the Buddha is manipulating at that time. Um, so, and hey, that's so long, Rinpoche. So, Teichen, so long, the Dudu Shena. Okay, so if we're looking at, uh, okay, what is it? Okay, so if we're saying that the subject matter of the Heart Sutra, is the five paths, okay? Um, then what is that first path, the path of accumulation? Um, what What is that? If we were to summarize the meaning of it, what would that be? So Rinpoche said it's when the, the, there is an arisal in the continuum of the mind that aspires to enlightenment. Uh, so when one becomes a bodhisattva, so you're a bodhisattva if you have the arisal of this mind that aspires to enlightenment. Uh, and once you have this generation, this Mahayana mind generation, um, you then are a bodhisattva, you then are on the path of accumulation. And you have a very small window 
to fall off of that Mahayana path of accumulation. Uh, there's like three levels, small, medium, and great. Once you get, I think, to the second level, there's a big debate, but you remain a bodhisattva for sure a very sh short time after achieving this mind that aspires to enlightenment. Now, a short time after in terms of looking at it in categories and stuff, but it could be, I don't know, it could be an eon, you know, not, it, I don't know. But it, it's in the sequence, if we look at, you know, this has this many levels, this has that many levels, this has that many levels. We see that the path of accumulation has three, and it's usually argued that at the, the second level of the path of accumulation, you generally don't lose your bodhicitta. You generally don't become a, a any honest again. Um, so, uh, so that's what happens. Uh, you, you enter the path of accumulation when you generate bodhicitta. Um, and, okay, so that... That's just the normal presentation. Now, there's obviously a sharp capacity practitioner whose path of accumulation they've already had realization. So we're just talking about the general stages of the Mahayana path of accumulation the, um, is that one generates bodhicitta. Then there's three stages uh, that one goes through. Then hey, the Julan, the Dudu Shena, Gare. So then you when you have Tony La Mipe Garit Shine so when you have a special insight which has as its object of observation um, emptiness, uh, and you have this bodhicitta, right, at the path of accumulation, then you move on to the path of preparation. Um, so there are four stages, heat peak patience in the last mundane state of the path of preparation. Um, and basically at that last mundane state at the path of preparation, uh, you that's the last stage where you're an ordinary being, like a, a, an un, not an aria, last step, last mundane, last uh, ordinary being state. Um, and you have an inferential valid cognition of emptiness. It's not, so when, when we say inferential valid cognition, when we say we infer something, it's not kind of like, oh, I kind of think it. It's something that's not controvertible. This inference is based on correct signs. It's valid cognition and it's not controvertible. So um, if you kind of think something, that could be doubt still. Doubt tending towards false, doubt tending towards middle, doubt toward doubt that's kind of towards the right. Or it could just be correctly assuming consciousness where you just hit it, but you don't really have a reason for hitting the right target. Know? Um, so there's really stages of understanding. And once you get to this path of preparation, you have this special insight, uh, which is analyzed, you know, something very thoroughly that has its object of observation of, of emptiness. And then you have this union of calm abiding and special insight that takes place where this uh, uh, analysis is able to then harness the emptiness of an object as its object of observation of single pointed concentration. So then um, the next stage is an actual direct perception. Then Tonglan, Tonglan do do shena. Tonglan, Tony, Tony, most of the Gadi do so now. TJ, Tibetan, Tony, most of the Gadi do so now. Tonglan, TJ. So when you have the, um, so at this point, the Mahayana, uh, because we're talking about the Mahayana five paths. The Mahayana direct perception of emptiness. So when you have a direct perception, so when we look at the different consciousnesses, it goes from inferential valid cognition where you realize it uh, um, inferent through inference. Um, you haven't had a direct perception of it, but it's not controvertible because you've used the correct analysis, correct signs, and you know it to be true. Just haven't had that non-conceptual experience. So the path of seeing then you directly experience this object of observation of emptiness. You have a direct valid cognition um, and there's various stages you go through uh, where you're in a non-conceptual state uh, and then um, an uninterrupted state <coughs> and a path of release. Uh, and you come out of this uh, um, state where you now no longer believe for sure um, that things are truly established. You go back to ordinary stuff but you know better, like there's no turning, like you completely know better, you've experienced 
it. And it's uh, as Hari Bhadra, I think, says, you've like, like you've chased this thief out of the house and you've now locked the door and once you've come out of this realization. And that's all in this Jayangapi Lodru commentary. He interweaves like all kinds of really beautiful stuff uh, throughout it. So I really suggest it. Um, then hey, the um, uh, Golang. So, the, so now a Mahayanist who has seen emptiness directly is now a first ground bodhisattva. So people get confused by the bodhisattva grounds that those don't begin when you get bodhicitta and become a bodhisattva. Those begin when you see emptiness directly as a bodhisattva. Um, so uh, the first bodhisattva ground is at the path of seeing then Gomam. Okay, so once then, uh, so then we have these obstructions that take place. So there's three levels. There's small, medium, and great. And there's the great of great, the great of medium, and the great of small. Once one has gotten rid of the obstacle, which is called the great of great, and moves on to the great of medium, one moves from the path of seeing to the path of meditation. And the path of meditation is a series of realizations of clarity in regards to emptiness uh, and clarity. Um, Rinpoche says it becomes cleaner and cleaner as your obstacles and your obstructions uh, become less and less. Then Rinpoche, the Golam, the Tonglam, Tony Dopi Shera, Tonglam, the Tonglam, the Tony Musum Samba, Chasa. Then Golam, like a garden. Golam, the Gumbuka Guru. You know, the Sam, the Tomba Ni, Selfo Shagadu. Chipa. So it's the same clarity of emptiness that one has. I see. I see. So it becomes, it strengthens. Love uh, song. Did you hear that? Can you translate yeah. that? Oh, okay. I can try. Thank so you. the. The meditation on emptiness is the same. Um, so it's just the difference in the objects of abandonment of the path of meditation. So when the big, big or the great of the great objects of abandonment of the path of meditation are able to be counteracted or directly removed, then one moves from the uh, path of seeing to the path of meditation. And then throughout the path of meditation is just the, the nine stages of these objects of abandonment of the path of meditation, uh, which are progressively removed as one goes change, through. Change. Okay. Yeah. So, the, but the emptiness meditation is the same. Thank you. Thank you so much, Love Sama. I rejoice in the fact that you just pulled, like, I really, really just rejoice in that, that you were able to just, you know, translate all that um know exactly what all of that means because of your studies so thank you so much for doing that for us i mean it i mean it sincerely um okay so then a melulon rimache so the path of meditation then there's more of these obstacles uh that are being abandoned um and then melulon garde Melulam, Rimbo, Yomare, Melulam, Jepo. 
म्हणून अगं देवत I see. Uh, so, uh, so I was asking in terms of the bodhisattva grounds, um, where the, if there's like uh, it's changes, like you know, it's the first bodhisattva ground. Uh, one is on the path of seeing. Then, do the grounds change? Is there? A, and Rinpoche said the first bodhisattva ground is presented in the path of seeing as well as the path of meditation. Um, and the grounds, if we look at range, say they go through the path of meditation to the 10th bodhisattva ground and um and then the path of no more learning if we're speaking in terms of the hinayana vehicle it would be a foe destroyer hinayana foe destroyer at the path of no more learning uh um and then at the um the mahayana no more learning it would be buddhahood um so um so that is what the heart sutra so those things just discussed is what the heart sutra is summarizing and uh and when we look at you know the three we look at the abhisama alamkara going back to the matreya's ornament for clear realization and we look at um this idea of how this prajnaparamita mantra is said in this way um and how then you see a lot of reference to mother and feminine you know the feminine aspect in the abhisama alamkara commentaries there has to be really an explanation so again uh the main the best explanation Rinpoche said I, when i said you know if, if i know there's a lot of different ones like the six mothers and, you know what would be the best thing to say and he said that you know why is the um why is the mother it's a mother because it um is the th the um the three types of mothers the the mother, the exalted knower of basis, or all, depending on how you translate it, the knower and the knower of all varieties or omniscience, the knower of, of all aspects or all varieties. Um, so these three knowers are the mothers that uh, produce the Buddha. Uh, uh, but when we look at the beginning of the Abhisamalamkar, it says that which through the exalted knower of all or basis leads hearers seeking pacification to peace which through the exalted knower of paths causes those helping migrating beings to achieve the aims of the world and through the perfect possession of which the subduers set forth these varieties having all aspects the commentary it says that this knowledge of all base of all or all basis is uh leads hearers and solitary realizers to their state the knowledge of paths leads the bodhisattva superiors to their state and the knowledge of all aspects lead the Buddhist uh, superiors to their state. So we see these uh, these different these uh, these points that are made in reference to the hearers, solitary realizers, Arya Bodhisattvas, and Buddhas. But ultimately, we say that what is the Prajna Paramita, a mother of? What is this perfection of wisdom produce? Produces the Buddha. If we were to really say it in short term, produces Buddha um, through these three. Uh, serial realizations or these three knowers, if you will. Rinpoche, the Chua Don Lenja, I will do. So he said, let's do some question and answer. I asked and he said, yes, that's good. Question and answer. Hey, Alexandra. I can't hear you. Hold on one sec. I, I have a question and I, I know I've seen little hands. I don't know how to raise that on there. So I'm raising mine. Right so, on. 
Okay. So when I thank you, first of all, thank you for being here. Um, when I hear mother, I automatically think father as well. So if the um, Pajamparamita saying is the mother, would the father be the content, the knowledge, and the wisdom? Um, well, here's, here's an interesting point, and we can get into it. But in Tibetan Buddhism, when we look at method and wisdom, yes, wisdom is feminine. Method is masculine. Um, so it's some, for some reason, um, and you need a union of, of the two when we look at, you know, of method and wisdom in order to, you know, in Tantrayana in the final stages. Mm -hmm. um, the Rinpoche, the Ama, the, the Parshim, Parlo de Shimba, the Ama Dan Drapodu, then the Ama the Garage Sanjeje, then the Kontriwa, the Papa Suyen. When you say Baba Raja Baba, I hear a Papa. Ama Dan Papa. Chichi Baba Suale. Ama the Baba. The the Ama, this the Parshin, Ama. No, this is. So he would say that the Bodhisattva would be like the father and the um, wisdom would be like the mother. Um, so, so the action. So when we, the, so the method. Yeah. The top show, Sanam. So when we say um, posit that which is method, you would say the mind that aspires to enlightenment, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's mm -hmm. what method is. So um, uh, I may have, so the mind that aspires to enlightenment is method. Wisdom is emptiness. The Shantu Semba. Okay, so yeah, I just I mistranslated. I think I said Bodhisattva before um, mm -hmm. instead of Bodhicitta. Um, so the method is is Bodhicitta, and wisdom is uh, emptiness. Um, so this is when we look at method and wisdom. Um, so when we look at the Heart Sutra, um, if we're looking at feminine and masculine aspects, we would say you know the paths where we're speaking of Bodhicitta and at the path of accumulation and so forth, um, those types of things would be the masculine, and then the feminine would be the aspect of emptiness. Um, but is it symbolic, or I've always wondered, you know, about the, you know, the symbolism and where of that um, in Rimache, But it's not speaking of it in that sense. It's really speaking of it, the mother giving birth. It's just a synonym or a metaphor. That's it, a metaphor. Um, for the Buddha being born from this Prajna Paramita, um, this, um, um, yeah, so, so that's it. And there's a lot, I mean, there's huge amounts of information about this too, uh, in terms of, when I don't mean information, like uh, just in debate uh, about why it's a mother and, and uh, Love Song knows, I'm sure he's just been over it and the Chura over and over again. And anything you could add on to what I've said I would really appreciate um, because we had the question about um, the Prajnaparamita deity um, last week. And, you know, even Galupa Lamas, we find that some um, are interweaving that deity in. Um, and just wondering if what debates you may have heard or, you know, anything interesting uh, in India or if that comes up. I never heard any mention of. The Prajnaparamita as an embodied deity or a, a be, as a being, right? So it's always in terms of the mother, you know, being either the referring to the perfection of wisdom sutras or more specifically or more, you know, definitively referring to those, you know, exalted knowers, those wisdoms of realizing emptiness that give rise to the various the various Arya beings. Um, though a cool debate, which really does get kind of technical or you know gets detailed, but is a distinction that scholars have made with regard to the gebe yum dong soe yum. So it's whether or not the mother is to be 
thought of as the mother in this context, the wisdom realizing emptiness, right? Thought of as uh, that which, you know, creates the Arya being so that the Arya being is the result and the mother comes before, or so that would be Gebeyum, the, mo the mother which gives birth, or oh. the Oeyum is the mother which cares, which the mother which cares. So a Gaosan or so. So it's like that would be then that they exist simultaneously. You know, a lot of debates really do revolve around like the stages of cause and effect, no, no matter yes. what the topic is that always comes <laughs> back again and again. So this is one of those debates of, are we saying that these are cause effect that happen, you know, at one moment and then the future moment, or do they ex coexist together? The yum, does the mother and the child coexist together or are they necessarily former and, you know, earlier and later moments of events? So that's a cool debate. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> so love song is Sarah J, the Chura, the Yum, the Ama Dasi Mambodandu. Yeah. So what's the debate? Can you tell him in Tibetan? He can hear you. Well, it's just it's just from searching the searching what is searching. Mani searching right searching right searching now all that. Kebe Yum don Soe Yum Nigi. Kebe Yum don Soe Yum. Kebe Yum don Soe Yum. ジェフ<音楽><音楽><音楽><音楽> Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. It just gets so detailed. You're like, yeah, I know that topic. And then you start debating. You're like, I don't know that topic at all. So you start to think about it. I was thinking about the word, uh, I think mantra, right? In Sanskrit means mind protection. Right? So would you say that this mantra in the middle of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra is perfect? protecting your mind against grasping at true establishment, right? It's a summary of the, it's not a mantra in the sense of a name mantra of a deity. It's a summary for sharp capacity bodhisattvas to be able to realize quickly the intent, right? And it protects the mind against grasping. I, I was in the shower going, going hard at the... <laughs> Philosophy. I'm not even sure if I use soap, but <laughs> any more questions? Dan has a question. Hey, Dan. Uh, Tuchiche Rinpoche. Thank you for teaching, Tuchiche. Uh, I wanted to. Ask, I wanted to ask a question about. Um, so my question is about uh, omniscience. Uh, I want to understand more about the meaning of the word omniscience. Um, I, I, is, is it literally that you know all phenomena in the infinite universe? Yes. Or is it, that, is it that you can access the information of the infinite universe? Or that you, are, you are one with the infinite universe? Or? Hold on, I'm trying to get the view. Give me one second here. My mouse pad is not cooperating. Maybe it just won't. I hear help coming. All right, well, we're gonna stick with this. And then Nam Chen. Chu Tam Che Shingadu. Kon Tu Chu Tam Cheng O Chiba. It's fine. Can you get the view for me? To go so that the person asking the question comes up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I couldn't get the, how'd you do that? I, I felt like I was like playing like some video game. Like I couldn't get the cursor to like, like all right, I'm obviously not. Okay, konchiwa de, nam chen. Chu tam che shing du, chu tam che. So you have direct valid cognition of all phenomena. If you have omniscience, then they the chu don chu tam cheng wo chipa. That's a wrong way to ask. That. Uh, so uh, I was asking, I asked it wrong. So I basically that 
I asked if it's the same uh, essence, but yeah, everything's empty. Everything has the same exact nature of emptiness. So if you're saying he's one with phenomena, if you're saying that we're one with all phenomena, if you're translating it as uh, we're all have the same nature of emptiness, um, but our, our nature of emptiness and Buddha's nature of emptiness are not different. Um, just their perception of all phenomena si um, simultaneously, mm -hmm. conventional and ultimate truth. So uh, when we say it's uh, uh, all knowing, all, all, uh, all objects of observation. So if, there, if it is an object of observation and it is something to be known, uh, the Buddha uh, knows that. So, so in um, in omniscience, um, because the nature of the the of the like the being of a Buddha is different from that of a human, because a human is is limited to uh, a specific body in a specific place in a specific time, but a Buddha can can emanate multiple bodies in the Nirmanakaya, and in its in his Dharmakaya, he is you know one with uh, emptiness itself or, or wisdom, correct? So, so in that way, um, would it be the case that he knows all phenomena because he, in a way, his mind is one with all phenomena or is all phenomena? Or is it the case that he knows all phenomena oh. from some specific place in time? All like, phenomena. Is, is, yeah. It's, it's just because it's not one with, it's knowing. It has the, knowing. There, there's no obstructions. See, we have obst afflictive obstructions. And uh, we have obstructions to omniscience, right? That make it so we don't see as far. Even a Hinayana foe destroyer, right? Who has no afflictive obstructions is an omniscient. They still have barriers to all knowing. A Buddha has somehow got, has not somehow, has through a very specific pathway, gotten rid of what are called the obstructions to omniscience. And by doing so, made it so he or she can apprehend all objects that are that can be known um, so um, he or she doesn't become those objects he or she just can apprehend them as um, apprehend them the Rimache the Sanjay the the Chala Tonto trying to ask uh, the, the Sanjay the, the Dana uh, so I said, if the Buddha was here, what would he say? He said, Ramesha said he would see all phenomena, perception. So I was trying to say, like, what would he see in this room? Would it be in yellow chair? I was trying to get it back. You know, what, what's the Buddha's experience? And it's a simultaneous experience that you, I guess you have to be a Buddha. My little mind can't put that together, like how you could simultaneously apprehend everything. Yeah, so so then I understand it's I, I understand omniscience better now, but I think the final thing that I still do not understand completely is in which like how it is that a Buddha exists uh, in this you know space time. Like, does he exist in a specific space and time, or does he exist in a field of like like multiple spaces and time simultaneously, or does he exist in a dimension of the mind that has not to do with space and time? Uh, so, like you know, like it, like I, is it is it accurate to say that a Buddha can be on the moon? Like like that's where the Buddha is. He's on the moon, but he sees everything simultaneously. But he's on the moon physically, or or you know even you know spiritually or whatever. Uh, or is it more accurate to say that a Buddha resides as uh, you know in the mind? In, in the field of the mind as opposed to a field of space and time and that we could we could we could pray to a buddha be, and and he would always hear us and know us because he is in the mind and not in a physical space time somewhere like the moon well the buddha could be on the moon and here at the same time so here's the thing so we, we're talking about the three bodies of the buddha right the um the emanation body, the enjoyment body, and then the Dharma body. And then the Dharma body, the, the two, the cessation of suffering uh, in the mind of the Buddha, this permanent thing, and then the omniscience. Um, uh, and then, you know, the, the bodhisattva grounds that kind of push the Buddhas, uh, or the compassion that the, the Buddha practiced when he or she was a bodhisattva, right? 
um, generated compassion, generated bodhicitta for all sentient beings. So that pushes them out to help all sentient beings. So um, when they emanate, they don't emanate for anything but for the purpose of benefiting a sentient being, right? So when they show up in a place, um, so the omniscience is the mind, right? It's not a place. The Buddha's omniscience, the Rinpoche, the Sanjay, Nam Chen, Sheba Yin. Indeed. Then Sanjay, show, say enough. Can I ask one part? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Rimuchi Sangi Papa Shiki Ne Nichen Chiki Tang the Sugar Bis Ne Chiki Tang the Sugar Bis Bena Chik Dendi Yamena Chik. Sangi Shing, Dog Shing Nanga Sugar Bis, Chitan Nanga Sugar Bis, Ne Chiki Tang the Sugar Bis. Rimuchi, the country was good so do it. The Sanje Nanshan Garishudu, then the Sanje Garishudu, the Jitan Shudu, such a gender Shudu, Dawa Shudu, there's Namchen, the the Chudu. The Sanchen Mena, Sanchen, the Sent the Rimache, the Make Hanga Sanje Yemba, Lunko Dan Tuku, Umari, Yomari Ben. Yoba. Yeah. Oh. Oh, now I just went. Oh, it's okay. The 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 longko dan chuko the longko sanje papa the shansen papa becha chigudu. Oh Then they the the chuko the sanchen pam gari and pamba. Okay, so I was just trying to find out if there were no more sentient beings to become enlightened, right? Uh, I, you know, I was just trying to get, you know, around your question a little bit. Um, Rinpoche said, first of all, that when we look at the Dharmakaya, we say omniscience. Omniscience is consciousness. So omniscience is consciousness, um, and that when we say the body of the Buddha, um, that is kind of deceptive a little bit um, because we think of this body that's, but it's more that it's this state maybe or something like this uh, um, um, that is this consciousness that is omniscient and has the cessation of suffering. So that is that is an abiding consciousness. And if I said posit Buddha. Rinpoche said the emanation body, the, the enjoyment body, and then the truth body. Um, and then I asked if there were no more sentient beings, and everyone was a Buddha, if there would be a, an emanation body and an enjoyment body. And he said, yes. And I said, for what reason? What would be the purpose to emanate or to enjoyment, have an enjoyment body? Because the enjoyment body is teaching the superior bodhisattvas in, the, in the, this land somewhere. And the emanation body, he Rinpoche said, is emanating for various reasons. Um, so that's how far I got. And uh, I don't know that I'm going to get any further. Um, but what do you think about that, Love Song Law? I'm sorry, you're like, because I didn't take the last person down, you're foremost on my screen right now. Like there's no other people but you on our screen. So I felt like like you were, you and I were having a moment, but I realized that, I realized that just technology was luring me in. Um, but yeah, so so that's, that's uh, does that help, Ken? Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Did you say Sunday, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. So there's not a, so there's not like a Rimshi Mesa means a place, right? Or a, a place of abiding. Mesa. No, a place where he doesn't exist. There does there is no place where the Buddha doesn't exist. Okay, there it is. 
So, so there's no place. Oh, because the consciousness pervades all, right? And that could be a good reason. Okay, I see. Me pasa. I see. Me pasa. Me pasa. I see. So there's not a place the Buddha doesn't exist. It seems so possible that this there would isn't be... one place the Buddha's mind exists. See how mm -hmm. just hearing it, I thought he was saying there isn't one place, meaning like, but it's really there isn't a place that it doesn't. I thought it was there isn't one place, you know what I mean, that it, it abides. But it's, I thank you so much, Love Sangla. So I thank you for, very much. It's, it clarifies very much. Thank you. And Fuji the one question, if I could just ask more, again, explicitly, like one of the questions came was, does the, is, is the numkan one nature with all phenomena? That, I didn't know if Rinpoche. Rinpoche. He said it's fine to say that. So, so nam chen dan chu chang tam che ngo chi pa. Digrebe. Ngo shou sena. Ngo shou sena su 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 ro. You see? <laughs> what do I do with that? <laughs> That's a good answer. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, everything has its own nature, colors. but the Buddha all is still the same nature with everything. <laughs> Mo chipa. Yeah. Chipa. Chipa is a mother. Not. the moment you want to, but it's chipa mano. I see. Yeah. So we did, we're fine. But you can say, make that clear for Dan. That there's a difference between one nature being one nature and being the same, being one. Oh, I see. Those are different things, right? Thank you. Because I just heard it and just was like, oh, I see. So when we look at uh, one nature and the same nature, no, yeah. one nature and and being one, or being being the same nature and being the same. Oh, 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 I see. Chikpa maris, mo chikris, chikpa maris. Oh, tade is is and a young Okay, so when we look at this question of if uh, if things are are one, or if if things are one and are of the same nature, these are different topics. Um, so we can say that there's the subject of of same and different. Um, so when we we look at um, them, they would say that they are different, but of the same nature. Um, so when we say that um, omniscience and all phenomena are, are different, but of the same nature. So they aren't one, meaning you aren't one with it. Thank you, love some, um, but they are the same nature. Ngatsu dan chu tamche mo chipa. You so we and all phenomena are the same nature. So just to make it clear that it's not special to just that omniscience topic. Anyone else? Yeah, when we decided to do this, I was like, all right. <laughs> And I'm really glad that we did, uh, you know, um, just have a little discussion about perfection of wisdom in our school and its relationship to it and so forth. The key. The key. All right. So let's do the concluding prayers. And uh, thank you again, everybody. The fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure realm. Holy Lamas high, wrap the sky of your Dharma bodies in massive clouds of knowledge and love, 
and let them pour upon the earth of your disciples as we are ready, a shower of rain, the teachings deep and wide. Oh, I Sorry, wrong page. The teachings deep and wide. I dedicate whatever virtues I've collected for the benefit of the teachings and of all sentient beings, and in particular for the essential teachings of Venerable Lozandrapa to shine forever. I send forth this jeweled mandala to you, precious guru. I dedicate all this virtue to emulate the knowledge of the hero Manjushri and likewise Samantabhadra as well. With whatever dedication is praised as supreme by all the conquerors who traverse the three times, I also dedicate all my roots of virtue for the sake of auspicious deeds. In the pure lands surrounded by snowy mountains who are the source of all benefit and happiness, all powerful Avogateshvara, Tenzin Jatsu may stay until samsara's end. I pray for the long life of the precious Kensar Wandak, upholder of scriptural and realizational doctrines, spiritual friend who trained extensively in the five great philosophical texts with exceptional wisdom and perseverance. Sushi Rachi Kutsi Shabi Having the dogs here is like being in a debate courtyard to see like how stable your mind really is. Like while the dog's licking your arm and trying to read, <laughs> it's uh, could you really get to see how well you do in the bardo. And I, I feel that I would fail miserably as I just read the introductory mandala offering and had to like kind of add an addendum to it. <laughs> I hope I can get away with that in the intro.